Welcome back, I'm Tyler and you're watching Scarfing Scarves. Some of you might have noticed my recent absence over the last year or so. <laughs> Nobody. However, I was gone and some of you might like an answer to your questions like, where the fuck have you been? Everybody has their priorities. Mine just so happened to align with a massive procrastination bender that turned out to be more fun than I was bargaining for. My wallet decided to go a bit rogue on me during this time as well, which leads me to our second question. What the hell did you do to your hair? Short answer, I stopped dyeing it. Long answer, money. Professional hair dye is expensive and while some of you masochists out there might get your jollies off to a peppy bottle blonde covering your skull in poison, I happen to like my oxygen without the essence of soccer mom desperation and the ever-creeping reminder of death from every 50-year-old sitting under those terrifying bulbous dome chairs. They are the walking dead. Anyway, that about clears up my life, so without further ado, I introduce you to dating in the scene. Step one, don't do it. Non più vrai questi bei panachini. Gee, wasn't that helpful? Seriously, I don't know what you were thinking when you ventured into the goth scene looking for some undead sweetheart, but for those of you considering taking the plunge, let me just say, don't do it, don't do it. Just don't fracking do it. You got that? Liar. We both know you're gonna do it. And here's how to do it without getting chopped up into tiny, tiny little pieces. Rule one, don't date crazy. I know this may sound like common sense, but as someone who spends way too much time in the local goth club, you'd be surprised how often I find someone pre-shagging their very own rubber room. It's not like these types don't come with a warning label the size of a stripper's psych meds or anything. Remember, that glimmer in their eye is not true love, and no one names themselves Pixie Snot Fox Annex Sinister III without at least a few issues under board. So, pork at your own risk, but don't be surprised when the pills run dry, the fuzzy cups come out, and they volunteer you for an impromptu organ donation. I mean, it's not like you need that, right? Speaking of porking, that brings me to our next rule. Rule two, be prepared for inbreeding. Otherwise known as goth cess, balding velvet, or the state of overly bumped uglies in every goth scene in every place ever, alternative inbreeding is unavoidable. An unattached goth girl or guy is like blood in the water, and should you be lucky enough to catch a glimpse before the horde descends, you'll be relieved to know they've only been had 50 different ways by the time you shuffle over to greet them. The rotten apple of your eye is in roughly the same state as their favorite pair of decade-old boots, and if the floor of the club is anything to go by, the stickiness of their past relationships will cover you in a film so black you'll never be clean again. Will you probably have great sex? Yes! Will you soon be personally acquainted with every person they've ever fucked in every capacity ever? Yes! This certainly won't backfire on you the moment you get a little too frisky in front of their psycho-jealous ex. At least Edward Scissorhands kept his knives in the open. Rule three, bring them into the light. I know nobody likes the big Bernie Bright thing, and I'm certainly not above scuttling out like a cockroach the moment they turn on the lights at the club, but for the love of God, at least bring them out of the shadows before you decide to permanently attach your mouth to their face. Goth club lighting is infamous for making ravenous pterodactyls look like doable goth candidates. And as goth decor is usually on the darker side, the least you could do is vet their basic humanity before letting them ruin the feng shui by turning your closet into a giant nest of your own personal failure. Does that make sense? No. No, but you were warned. If you can't wait long enough to bring them to a place with some level of human dignity, a flashlight will usually do the trick and has the added benefit of blinding them momentarily should you have to make your escape. You'll thank me when they spawn their freaklings with your enemies. Which reminds me. Rule four, make sure they speak the common tongue. I know it might seem like a hindrance to actually swap words before various and sundry fluids, but try to actually have a conversation outside of the screaming industrial bass line. Almost anyone can seem like a half-bearable human being grunting out one-word replies over the sound of Jasmine and Rose. And while it might be cute to hear them yell what for the umpteenth time, Bringing them out onto the patio will be the real test of your unholy bond. Get them to a seat without their ex pickaxing you in the stomach and you're halfway there. Bonus points if you actually ask their name. Rule five, set the boundaries. The final stage of solidifying any potential partnership is to set your lines in the sand. You might get away with that namby-pamby implied monogamy with your knitting circle, but if you don't want your little psycho encircled in a wholly different manner, you'd better speak up immediately about your intentions. Few social situations are saturated with so accessible a crowd of potential partners. The people around them are nearly guaranteed to share similar interests, and should you think your charming personality alone is going to be enough to stop them from propositioning your interests 60 ways to Sunday, you haven't seen a day of thirst in your life. 
Two cents said they'd do your mother if she'd even heard of Bauhaus, and 50 says they'd film it for your viewing pleasure. So speak up. If you're lucky, the ensuing conversation will occupy their mouth long enough for you to ensure nothing else does. So there you have it. I'd like to remind everyone that I am not liable for any physical or emotional damage you may acquire, sexual disturbances in the force are not my prerogative, and any and all instances of surprise fuzzy cuffs may be submitted to the office of You Should Know Better, You Little Idiot. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and I'll catch you next time. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it all! Damn it! 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 Damn it!